so this is uh, today is like a bridge small brief bridge session between the first part and the second part of the book and uh, i have a few slides and then we'll just go over some demo um so the first so i'm covering three chapters the workflow projects intro to the second section wrangle and tibbles so the project uh, the chapter on workflow basically talks about how to organize your um, how to better organize your uh, work and one way to do is to you to do that is use r projects um uh, create an r studio project for every data analysis project that you're doing keep your data files and scripts there you can save your outputs and clean data there and when if in your code you are using file paths to upload uh, files or read files use relative paths not absolute paths what that means is absolute path is like my for example my minakshi's desktop um this uh, and then um documents and then our projects and stuff if i give the same code to you you will not have you will have a different file path because it's based on your computer and your preferences and then the code will not run because i defined it using absolute paths so instead it's better to use actually always recommended better uh, always to use relative paths where you have everything in one folder and then your path is relative to that folder one package that is helpful this is not part of the book but i thought it was a helpful plug here if uh, people don't know about this package um so a package called here um and this is a artwork by alison horst she does a lot of amazing artwork with the uh, respect to just r packages and teaching r um so this package here it helps it helps us define a relative um the relative file path very easily and i'll i'll just show um you how to do that actually i can just show let me switch my screen share actually i could ask aditi and molik have you used here the package here uh, yeah i use uh, uh, here uh, some whenever i have a few uh, files to refer like and it's in the uh, and i have the code there as well but uh, uh, sometimes if i have huge data set then i don't prefer he, uh, here okay. i usually go for uh, set wd okay okay yeah because then you have to define what 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 is the reason um because then i can, i don't want to push all the uh, bulk of data into github usually if i'm uh, i'll push my code to uh, push my code online so i cannot push uh, usually when you uh, when you use here it should be in the directory where we are coding right or yeah. uh, in a nearby folder so yeah Sometimes here I, yeah no, here it, start yeah. with your project directory and yes yes yeah. since your okay since your data is just located elsewhere yeah yeah i have used add projects but not here okay okay so let's let's see so in the chapter uh yeah so this is um this is my file you, can you see see my r studio screen now so yes yeah yes. so these are my r projects and if you if you're using r projects already then you know about it and this is the my directory for this presentation and uh, i just made like i just put a random data folder and inside there is this data file so i'm just uh, 
let me see if I can show how to use here for that um, to go to read data from that file. So um, first load the package. I've already installed it. And then I'm just going to create an object with called path to file, um, which has that information about the path. So before that, actually, if I just show where does here start looking at? So if we do here, you can see that it is all it already knows what my current directory is. So I just called here, and this is my current directory, Dropbox, R projects, GitHub. And this is my current directory, R4DS, chapter eight to ten. Now file. I already created, but I'm just going to create again here. And then what is my folder structure? So my folder structure is data, because this is my data. This It is in the data folder. And then csv. That's my file. OK, so now I have a, now I can use, if I do read csv, I want to read that file and just say part to file. It knows to read this. So this this is that file. This is the person.csv file. So now if I give this whole folder to someone else, um, I send this to Aditi with the path to file coded in that. And if she starts with working within the directory, she can use this same path and read the code. So that's it just helps helps in keeping things neat and tidy and um, helping people collaborate on the same stuff. So that's that. Um, and Deepthi joined. Deepthi, you know about projects, right? Do you, um, Deepthi is on mute. Anyway, okay. One more thing I just wanted to show you probably already do this because it says that in the chapter that when you're starting a new uh, project or just closing your workspace, workspace are always ask you save current works say, workspace. Say don't like the best practice is to not save it because that forces a good habit then that you all the packages that you need for your code, um, they are, your code is self-contained and it will run the next time wherever or whenever you open it. Um, okay. So I'll stop sharing this one. Let me go back to the presentation again. Any questions on that? Um, the next chapter is just the introduction to the next section called Wrangle, where we learn how to wrangle, um, like really get useful information out of our data. And uh, so the following chapters are going to be, which we will be discussing in the next few weeks, will deal with this importing data, tidying data, and transforming data. So importing is just how you read your file into R, tidying is using the tidyverse principles, how to transform your data in a way, how to change your data set in a way that is easy to work with R, and then transforming. So the transforming, um, there will be different chapters in data transformation, dealing with um, how to work with multiple data sets, strings, factors, date and times, things like that. And so the first chapter in that is tibbles. Tibbles is just data frames with different features to make life easier. For me, it is easy data frame, like easier data frame to work with, um, mostly the print function. And most functions in tidyverse produce tibble as output. How to create tibbles? Um, so uh, it is included in the tidyverse library, the uh, tibble package, but you can also load it separately using library tibble. 
Um, so the most common command is as stable. Um, so for example, cars is actually a preloaded data set in uh, Basar. Um, it's a data frame, but you can, you can um, do as tibble cars and it will reduce a tibble then. Um, you can also make it with individual vectors. So just like uh, you can make data frames, you can do that with tibble function um, and you have a vector here. Um, if using individual vectors X, Y, Z, we have this tibble. You can also use uh, non-syntactic names. Non-syntactic names are names that don't follow the syntax of, you know, uh, that a name cannot start with a number or it cannot start with a special character. You can, so, uh, so those names that don't start with a number or special characters and these features, they are called non-syntactic names. Um, you can use non-syntactic names here, but they have to be for, uh, enclosed in these backticks. So here there, there is, um, I, 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 I don't know where you will need these things, but it is just like these are useful things to know if they come up in your work. Um, and if you have used non-syntactic names, then I'll be interested in knowing and where these are useful. Um, so they are, uh, you can use non-syntactic names. Question. Yes. Sorry, sorry, sorry to interrupt you. How table is different? How is uh, table different from data frame? Do they, does it take less memory or? Um, I'll come to that. I actually don't know about okay. memory. They don't say. They okay. Don't say yeah, yeah, yeah. But there is, there is like one slide on the difference and it's, it's for me, it is just difference in usability. But uh, it doesn't, I doesn't discuss memory in the chapter. Okay, okay, yeah. Thank you. Um, so yeah, so you just enclose your name in your back ticks and then it will accept those non-syntactic syntactic names also. For example, there is a special character smiley here. This is just a space and this is a number. Um, then you can also, uh, um, enter your data frame as you would uh, do a data entry. And there you can use triple function, which is short for transposed table. And here you can see, you know, instead of X equal to Y equal to, you can just, um, uh, this is a different naming. So these are the variable names, X, Y, Z, and below them, you can say what X, Y, Z all contain. This is just a comment line that Hadley said he uses when uh, he's using this method of making a table um, to explicitly show where the header is and where the rest of the information is in the data set. Okay, so Aditi, yeah, this is just, this is just table versus data frame. So these are the, uh, they talk about two things. Uh, first is how it prints. Um, so if you try to, print a big data frame, uh, data frame, it will just, if you have like thousands of, uh, hundred, uh, like many variables and thousands of, uh, or more of records, it will print everything and it will really slow you down on the console. But no matter how big a data frame, um, data set is, if it is in the form of table, table shows only first 10 rows and all the columns that fit on the screen. So for example, here, this NYC flights 13 package has the flights data set that we worked in the last chapter. Um, it shows only the 10 rows and then tells us that there are so many more rows and 13 more variables and the variables names are here. And the good thing is that every variable, this they uh, it already tells us what type it is integer or you know what class it belongs to which is borrowed from the structure structure data set that command um there are ways that you can control if you uh if when you're printing you can control how many uh how many of these variables it shows um and those fine controls are possible so for me the most usable is this print function that i can quickly know uh, a lot of things about my data set 
uh, by just using print if I use print table instead of view date frame or something else. Um, and then um, this is this is the other difference table versus data frame. Um, like how the extraction happens. So you can, just like data frame, you can extract by name. So cars dollar speed will give you the speed column, or you can extract by position, like in a list. Um, and if you, you can do the same thing with pipe, um, but you have to use dot X for, to substitute for the data set name, table name. Um, so here, the difference between data table and data frames is that tables are stricter than data frames. So in data frames, you can do, um, I can do cars SP, cars dollar SP. And it, if there is no other variable starting with SP, it will still show me that uh, it will still produce speed column. But table will not do that. It doesn't do partial matching. So that was another big difference. Um, yeah, and that's, I didn't have a time. I forgot to do a thank you slide, but that's that's all the slides that I have. Um, and Aditi, these are the, just the two major differences that I read in the- Yeah, yeah, And one thank more you. difference for table versus data frame. Uh, the data frame has string as factor is equal to true by default. Okay, okay. And the but table, table is not- have this setting. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Thank you, Malik. And uh, table doesn't change column names when you import it as table. Okay. Oh, otherwise data frame adds X, no? To the beginning, is that what you're yes. saying? Okay. Great, I will add those to the slides. Thank you, Malik. Welcome. <laughs> okay. Um, did anyone do the exercises? Do you have any questions about exercises? Okay, I'm going to cheat a little. No, I'm going to cheat a lot. And we'll just, we'll go through the um, solutions. Um, have Has anyone been referring to the solutions guide for R4DS? Yeah, whenever I practice this, I... I do use yeah, I when do. I don't understand it. Yeah, yeah. I do use it for some yeah. of the things. Yeah. Uh, so let's just go through. There were some exercise questions that I just didn't know the answer. So I just went to the solutions um, guide. Uh, let's go to tables and exercises. Okay. So first is how can you tell if an object is a table? So if you print it, it will just look different. You know, just like we saw. Um, then the next question is compare and contrast the following operations on a data frame um, and equivalent table. What is different? Why might the default data frame behavior cause you frustration? So here it's a data frame of ABC is one, XYZ is A. And if you call DFX, then DFX will give you the A value. If you call Tibble, like if it's a Tibble instead, it will give you an error because it won't do partial matching. Um, and then there's more stuff that I actually, I don't think I understood completely in the solutions. Um, So this one. Oh yes, yeah. If you use data frames with this, I didn't know that this, uh, with data frames with square brackets, the type of object that is returned, this is what I'm reading, um, differs on the number of columns. If it is one column, it won't return a data frame, but instead will return a ve vector. With more than one column, then it will return a data frame. This is fine if you know what you're passing in, but suppose you did DF VARS variables where VARS was a variable, uh, then that code depends on the length of VARS. So this, this was new that using square 
bracket, if you have only length one, then it will return a different kind of output. Um, do you have any more insights on this question? Normally the uh, data sets that we use are so big that this is not an uh, not a issue that we encounter, but good to know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If you have the name of variable stored in the object uh, var uh, mpg, how can you extract the reference variable from a table? Um, so if you have name stored in a different object, then you can use square brackets, like double double square back brackets as, as this. You cannot use a dollar sign because if we use df dollar var, it would look for a column which is named var. Then, uh, then yeah, this fourth question was practice referring to non-syntactic names in the following data frame by ext extracting the variables called one, plotting um, of square, uh, scatter plot of one versus two, and then creating a new column, uh, which is again a non-syntactic name called three, and renaming the columns. So all of this is similar to what you would have done before, what we would have done before, except just remember to use backticks um, for names. So if you want, like the examples are here. So, <laughs> so this is funny, like they have just named the data frame annoying because it is going to be annoying if you have these non-syntactic names and you have to keep using backticks. So just if you're dealing with them, remember to use backticks. Um, what does table end frame do? So has anyone used this table end frame? I didn't, I, again, I didn't know about this. Um, it converts from uh, data frame and uh, vector. Uh, yeah. From yeah, data have... frame to vector or from vector to data frame, both way it is possible. Yeah, have you used it, Molik? No. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, and then and then what option controls how many additional column names are printed as the footer of a table? So think if you just do print, um, if you look at print table options, then it is equal to INF or something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So n extra. If you so to look at options that are possible, uh, you have to go to help print table print dot tbl, and in there the n extra argument determines the number of extra columns. And there are more arg arguments there if you want to customize it. That's it. That's it for today from me. Any. Any questions, any other insights, anything else you want to share? Hi, Meenakshi. I just had one doubt regarding this end frame. Uh, mm -hmm. So is is, this, is there something similar uh, for end frame and data frames or is it really specific to tables? Oh, that's a good question. I don't know, but I, I can look it up. Yeah. Okay, I did look it up and I, I couldn't get much clarity. They said it's only specific to tables. You can't use something like end frame on a data frame. So okay. I wanted more clarity on that. Should we post it on the uh, R4DS group? If we are, we don't know about For, uh, I just had to add to that. For data frame, you can as well use as dot data frame or data frame if you want to create a new data frame. And when it comes to table, it will be end frame. Uh, but oh. you cannot use end frame for uh, data frame. Okay, because the the purpose of end frame itself is to create it into a data frame, so that isn't required when you're using a data frame. Yeah, is, is that right? Yeah. Okay. Okay, I think that is. Uh, yeah, that is okay. But yeah, I'll just look into it and maybe we can discuss it next time if we get more answers. But that was uh, convincing, Aditi. I, yeah. Thank you. Okay. okay. Yeah. Thank you, Aditi. Um, I wanted to ask: Is anyone attending the R Studio talks? Have you registered? Yeah, I am attending. 
Yes, I am uh, also attending. What what uh, are you attending all of them or are some of them more like sound more interesting to you all? Uh, I'm going to lean towards all our lady session. They okay. have learn our and uh, efficient programming, so I think I lean towards that. This time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I am more what interested in modeling and uh, uh, yeah, our micro. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Deepthi? I haven't registered yet, so I <laughs> just keep my mind. I, I skipped it. Okay, okay. Uh, it's on Friday, like there are two sessions, 24 okay. hours, and, and every talk has two sessions. Okay. Uh, so if one timing doesn't work out for you, you can, like, there are alternate times for each talk. So oh, that's, okay. Okay. yeah, that's okay. very useful. Okay. Yeah, um, I kept getting some Twitter feed, but I just missed it somehow. It's, yeah. I think you can still register. I actually registered for all of them yesterday. Like I enrolled, like oh, okay. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I, yeah. oh okay. I'll just look it up then. I think hopefully. Yeah. I yeah. Um, I will. What about uh, you? So there is one talk. I, I have, I have, uh, I think the talks that you both said modeling and uh, what did you say, Aditi? I, when I heard you, I thought, yes, I have uh, it. Efficient programming. And yeah, uh, efficient programming. Yeah. Yes, yes. No, no. Yeah. And there is also a talk for using R for good, like data for good. So I'm very, oh. I'm interested in that. And then, you know, there is Hadley's talk about tidyverse. Um, yeah. So that one. Yeah, of course, like I want to attend all of them, but <laughs> I have to be realistic. <laughs> And I think somebody is also giving a talk on data journalism. Is it? Oh, okay. He's a journalist, right? But I don't oh, know. Yeah, yes, yes. There, is, there is one about COVID. Um, so I think two talks about COVID, like how to how they used R. Uh, okay, so okay. Murdoch, I think, like I know I follow him on Twitter and there are these like amazing um, visualizations that they have been doing from the beginning. So I think one talk is his. I have enrolled for that one as well. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. So maybe next time when we meet, we can discuss like some things that we learned from the talks. Yeah, definitely. Um, also, uh, I'm sorry, but I don't think I'll be able to present next week. Does anybody want to take up or we can shift it? 26th. What is the chapter? Reader. Uh, data input. Data input. Um. Any volunteers? I can take it up then. Okay. Okay, Malik. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Malik. Welcome. And we can break it if you want. If you want to, yeah. No, I think it it would be easy. I can take it. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, on the data import or uh, tidying data also? Okay. The Do you think one session will be enough? Let me check. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. let us know. If only if I can take... Uh, uh, I will set it up a presentation myself and I will check it how long it okay, takes okay. myself. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. And I'm sorry. No problem. It's okay. All right, then. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you. See you next time. For the presentation. Week. Bye.